Until relatively recently, most modern beehives will have been made out of wood, largely on the basis that trees are made of wood, and that's where bees feel most at home. Now that other materials have become available, such as high-density polystyrene, um, we can buy things like this polynuke here on the right, uh, which are really useful, very light to carry around. The bees love them because they're so well insulated, they keep the bees nice and cosy, and the only downside possibly is that they're a little bit more fragile than wood, so you just have to be handle them a bit more carefully, but generally they're really useful pieces of kit. Uh, next door to it here is a standard wooden five frame nuke, a national, I think, it, well, actually I think it's a commercial that I've modified to national, but anyway, it's a five frame nuke and of course st they're both standing on one of my top bar hives which currently isn't being used. In the foreground here there is an interesting rendering of my quadratic hive using, it's a, a recycled plastic made from bottle tops and you can see from the, uh, the stripey effect on it that the bottle tops have been at least partially remelted and then fed through a roller and made up into sheets which have then been cut to make these boxes. Right behind that in the background you can see one of um, Albert Tubak's Eco Bee Boxes. Uh, Albert's uh, based in Utah in the USA and he makes these wonderful little um, Eco Bee Boxes. He was kind enough to send me one last year and uh, it's, it's doing nicely. Um, in fact, I've got, that's only a two box version, I've got the other two boxes with some bees in it on the other side of the apiary. Albert's Eco Bee Box, I think he calls it an urban beehive now, um, was actually pretty much the inspiration for the uh, quadratic hive in many ways. There were certain aspects of his um, Eco Bee Box that really appealed to me and helped me along the way in designing this uh, quadratic hive. So I'd like to just show you a little bit more detail. So these boxes are made from recycled plastic by the guys at Lush and you can see the board itself is um, it's a compressed board, it's got a kind of semi-gloss finish, it, it looks like it's been through, through heated rollers and they've made a really kind of nice stable board. I don't know what the um, UV resistance is like, we'll find that out in due course but meanwhile nice, nice solid board to make hives out of. So here's the hive itself and it's made to exactly the same dimensions as my wooden ones and uh, this in fact is held together with hot glue so um, I think that's making a nice sound joint. Now the guys at Lush tell me that the next one of these is going to have mitered joints so that you don't get this effect here where as it were end grain is showing uh, it's going to be a nice tidy corner so that'll be interesting. Um, the frames themselves, excuse me a minute, I've just got a bee stinging the back of my head, thank you very much. Um, the frames are made, they've made the frames exactly the same way I make the frames. Um, it's simply a cross top bar and a couple of side pieces. Um, these are glued together, mine are pinned and glued, but you know, they both use these um, plastic, standard plastic ends which are uh, nominally 38 millimeters. I find they're more like 37, 37 and a half, but that's okay because the the box is designed to be 190 millimeters in both directions in on the interior, which means that these frames you can hold exactly five of these frames um, if they're 38 millimeters. And in fact, I think these must be 37 because there's about a 5 mil gap at the end, which is fine because that gives you play so you can take the frames out. And this is one of the big advantage of, the, of this square format over the, the longer format for the Langstroth hive. Because the National Hive is itself square, the, these little boxes can also be square, which, which has some advantages which I'll come to shortly. Um, but meanwhile, the frames themselves, as you can see, they don't have a bottom. The sidebars finish well before the bottom of the hive and what happens is that the bees build comb uh, within, that, um, within that frame perfectly happily and the bottom end, the bottom of the, of the comb is left free and I'll show you that. I've got a piece over here. I think. Obviously there are a number of ways of doing this, but this has just had a top bar on it and it hasn't had a frame at all. And you can see they've, they've built perfectly good comb. Um, the, 
This one has a has a metal strapping around the outside. This was my original idea for a frame and it seems to work very well actually. It's very very strong. Um, the metal strapping is held in place simply by clipping it under the um, spacer here. So this can be the metal strapping can be taken off completely. Uh, in this particular case, you, as you can see, if those of you who use Apideas will know that what I've done here is transferred a little mini frame from an Apidea. Um, I've strapped it onto this particular uh, top bar and then the bees have just built a bit more comb around it to fill in the space. It's still got loads of bee bread in it, so that's perfectly usable for little frame. Um, or I could take that out, I could cut around the Apidea and put it back into an Apidea, which in fact is probably what I'm going to do in this case because I need to... Um, I've got some Apideas that need some frames in them. So you can use, um, as it were, full frames, which is the metal strapping idea. You could, of course, make a full wooden frame, but, you know, the metal strapping's easier. You can just use top bars like this. Now, I can't guarantee that they won't fix comb to the sides of the hive, though. I, I suspect they probably will. Um, or you can make up these... Um, pie shaped, and I mean pie as in the Greek letter pie, uh, shaped um, frames which are actually my favourite because they're very stable and very easy to get in and out of the, uh, of the box like this. This is a frame with a little starter strip of foundation at the top and this is a really uh, reliable way of starting these frames. It's just held in with a bit of molten wax along here and you can cut your strip of foundation just to fit that shape very easily. So arranging the boxes in this configuration where you've got four hives with entrances mutually at right angles. There's an entrance there, there, here and here. That means the bees flying out aren't going to get confused about where to come back, we hope. Um, likewise, the queens going out to mate aren't going to get confused as to where to come back. And so you've got four hives, four individual hives benefit, benefiting from each other's warmth. Um, which can be set up as a little mating station like this and you can mate four queens from the same position um, each with their own little little separate box uh, this is exactly the way brother adam used to do it up on dartmoor um, he used a, a national hive divided into four and he used half national frames but this is the same principle and once you've mated your queens um, and you've taken the queens out and put them wherever they're going to go you can then you could actually stack these four hives back up again into a vertical col uh, colony and give them an another queen or leave one of the queens in there of course and you've got a, a you're back to a four box um quadratic hive so obviously with four um hives like this you've got to keep the weather out of them so what i like to do is to use a piece of this stuff which is reflectix and I put one of those over each of the boxes um, because they're peelable and I can check each box individually that way and then put another board over the whole thing on top. You could also use the, you could also use the um, oversized boards which are if, if intended as roofs on the, on the single high of course and that gives you a nice overhang to protect them from the weather. You'd then have to put something over you could actually duct tape these together, to be honest, uh, to keep the weather out temporarily while you use them as a, in this configuration. Um, maybe I should mention at this stage something I haven't yet tried, but uh, and maybe I'll set this up as a challenge to somebody. Um, if you can imagine, you've got four of these boxes together like this in this pattern. Supposing you built four high on, directly over these, so you've got four by four boxes, four, a group of four boxes all, to, all, all together with entrances pointing in different directions and then supposing you put a queen excluder over the whole thing and then stacked national supers on top of that. Basically what you'd be running then is a four queen system. All four colonies would then work together to send workers up into the supers uh, to, to, uh, to stack them full of nectar and make honey. That's the theory anyway. Um, love to see somebody do that. Maybe I'll try that next year. Um, this stuff is useful as well. This is uh, material used for sign painting, um, or rather these days it's printing on sign material. I can't remember what this is called, some kind of foam, um, foam plastic material with a hard surface, but it's very stable and um, 